Welcome back everyone to another exciting Duckman Cycles video production. Today we're doing a little more preparation of Eleanor's engine with a few more upgrades. I'm a bit spoiled and some stock features just aren't good enough for me, so we're going to change out some bits and bobs today, and while we're at it we're going to check the end play which I trust is good. This engine is a super low miles build that's been shelved for quite a while. Real simple stuff here, but it's stuff that needs to be done. And at the time of this recording, it's still just a bit too windy from Hurricane Ian, some 500 miles away from me, to even consider bringing Eleanor outside. There's just way too much being tossed around and falling out of the trees and off of the roof with a nice garnish of flying tree sap. But as soon as that stops, we'll finish up getting down to the gory stuff. And I know you guys want to see just what the hell I'm doing after Earl put all that time into paint and body work. And that we shall! But for now, please licky, likey, comment, and subscribe, and we'll get back right after that intro. Thanks for watching! Alright folks, well we're back, and we got us some stuff for Eleanor's engine, which is right over here. In these boxes, this is stuff we ordered up, oh geez, about a year ago. I have a high friction clutch disc that needs to go on. I've also got a, ooh, that scared the baby. <laughs> a nice stage one pressure plate to make this high grip clutch grab even better. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna change out to a lightweight flywheel. These parts have been sitting in my shed for almost a year. It took me a little while to round them all up. They've just been around. <laughs> but we're going to put these suckers onto Eleanor's engine today and get everything ready to go. The first step that I usually take is... Well, that's already grippy. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's already grippy. But ordinarily what I do is I would sandblast where the uh, clutch would actually grip on, on the surfaces to prepare them. But it looks like this is already done. It is a little oily though. So I am going to spray a little brake parts cleaner on it, but otherwise, let's get these sucker installed. Oh, and here's Cheeky. Cheeky's with me today. Cheeky has learned to grip. So now Cheeky can take rides on Daddy. Oh, you're going to go hide? You're afraid of the camera? <laughs> Well, whoever the ding-dong was that installed this clutch the last time put way too much grease on the input shaft as they put the clutch on. Everything in here has just got grease all over it. Yeah, so, bad news. Something I never took apart on this engine before. This looks like a, uh, yeah, I think it's just a standard Volkswagen pressure plate. I'm looking for any part numbers on it or anything. Yeah, it's got a standard Volkswagen part number on it. Of course, we're replacing it with this one, which I'm going to have to knock the bearing out of the center of it, so that way it matches what I've got on Eleanor. Okay, well, now that we know what we've got here, you can see all this grease is just on everything. That's not something I did, no. <laughs> I never mess with the clutch on this thing. All right, well, good. Out of the right, way. This tool might look familiar to you. It's the Torque Dude. It's the same exact tool that I've been using to take off rear axle nuts on beetles. It also happens to work right here on a flywheel land nut. There it is. Get on there. Boy, I was being a dick. And the greatest part of it is it uh, just takes an 11 millimeter with a half inch wrench and you can just wind this thing right off. So. I say half inch, three eighths, three eighths wrench. Anyway, nonetheless, people have told me, "Hey, Duck Man, why don't you just use an impact and wind it off?" And I don't know if it'll work, but we're gonna try it. Here we go. Yeah, clearly that's stupid <laughs> stuff that people tell me. I swear. Sometimes I think they tell me to do it just so they can see it, but I knew that wasn't gonna work. That was just stupid. <laughs> I should have a flywheel lock on this thing right now. I can't find mine. So hopefully this flywheel doesn't turn around too much and give me too big of a problem. Ah, here we go. You see the impact couldn't do that. It was gonna ring like a bell and make a whole lot of noise. This torque dude is great. Instead of having a long breaker bar six feet long and having some monkey hang from it, 
can actually remove the gland nut. Just some basic hand tools. That's it. That one looks to be in some really good shape too. That was probably brand new. I mean, it doesn't even have like much for wrench marks or anything on it. Yeah, even the little roller bearings and needle bearings on the inside look good. Inside of there. All right, well, great. Now we gotta get this thing off of here. Just trying to make it a little cleaner. But it kind of comes off in a rocking motion. You know what, I didn't grab a curl bar. Sometimes you can just get in there with, like this, and you get around the other side. And just rock it till it comes off. And watch your toes. It's actually about ready to just fall off. There it is. Now she comes. All right, there's that old flywheel in there. It wasn't just a little grease in there. It was a lot of grease. That is just disgusting. You're not supposed to put grease in the clutch, you guys. So when you do grease that input shaft, which looks like this sticking out of your transmission, you put just, you know, a, a thin, paper thin layer on this thing. Because once you slide that clutch on, oh. it's gonna just squeeze that grease out everywhere. Anyway, this is not going back on this car. I will stick it in my pile though. There's no reason not to save this as a good flywheel for something else. All right, I'm gonna have a look at that seal. I think the seal's gonna be in good shape. If it is, I'm leaving it. I didn't have any leaks on it before. I anticipate we're probably not going to now either. All right, we gotta clean these surfaces. Just degrease them. Gotta do this clutch too. Probably a good idea, just in case there's any grease on it at all. I do see a little grease spot on here, so I'm gonna wipe it down with some paper towel real fast, and then I'll just give it a squirt one more time and just let it sit while we're doing some work. It'll be nice and dry by the time we get back to them. Hey, anyway, this is my gasket box. Everything that's in here is all stuff that I acquired from other people that just handed me stuff that they would never used. Or if I had to buy a whole kit just for one gasket and you have all this extra stuff left over, it all winds up in this bin, and this bin keeps getting bigger rather than smaller. <laughs> There's just a ton of stuff in here, but anything that's gasket or seal related, there's the bellows for the oil-filled dipstick tube on my Type 3. Just some random washers that were in there. But in here should be an O-ring for my flywheel. We're gonna need one. All right, this is a critical step. You wanna make sure that you get an O-ring that fits to the inside of this flywheel in here. Say, hey Duckman, what are you doing in there right now? Let's put a little grease in the channel that this squeezes into. Just because. Again, I think they tell you to use a little bit of uh, motor oil or something in there. You wanna get this thing sealed up. And again, I like to use a little grease, always, because it has a kind of a wax in it. And sometimes that helps to get things settled. So that way things seal up better because once the oil and stuff washes away, the wax stuff sometimes will stay there a little bit built up. All right, and our O-ring just simply drops into the groove that's in here. Always some idiot with a damn boom stereo going down the street. And people ask me, you know, hey Duckman, what kind of stereo are you gonna put in your in your beetle? Oh, come on guys, really? I wanna be one of those people? Why would I want to do that to myself or anybody else? All right. Take a little bit of that grease, and rub it around the outside also. And this is just a, a super thin layer. So that way, once we shove this into the engine, the seal that rides on that will have a little slip. It's good for it. All right, let's see if we can get this thing mounted. Eight holes in this one versus the old stock one, which had four. Now, sometimes these can be drilled a little wonky, 
and can make it a little difficult to get the flywheel seated properly on the crank. So we'll have to see which holes we line up with and uh, <laughs> beat it up a little bit just to get it into position. Let's see if we can make that happen. All right. On the flange where the seal mounts on here, well it doesn't really mount but it rubs it. I like to just put a little bit of grease on it. The manual tells you motor oil but I don't have any handy. I guess my grease is going to be just fine. That's good. Now again with my greasy hand, don't put it inside the flywheel. This is a clean surface. And you notice we've got eight dowels on this flywheel but there's four dowels on the crank because that's just your standard crank and this is a high performance yeah, as flywheel. I said before, that's a dual lip seal in there. And I'm trusting it to be good because this engine, as I said, might have been sitting for a little while, but it didn't have any leaks when I did run it previous. And putting this in here now, I'll have to be checking the end play on it once we get it all bolted down tight. I think it'll probably be fine. If not, we'll make a few adjustments. I knew this was going to be a problem. Sometimes these things don't always line up with the dowels. Only ever a problem with these aftermarkets. I just touched the surface that I just cleaned, so I'll be cleaning it again once we get this thing bolted in here. Well, I'm going to move the camera out of my way because I need to muscle this thing and this camera's just going to kill me and I'm going to knock it the fuck over if I get a little angry. So, we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, sometimes, these things only want to go on one way. If those holes are not drilled absolutely straight, then that's what you run into. It's nice to have a crank and flywheel balanced together. Well, that's not always the case, considering that this crank is one thing and this flywheel came from a different location. But anyway, let's see if we can get this gland nut just snugged up. Get that flywheel pulled in. I think it's right about where it needs to be. If that's the case and it's ready to torque down. And these things go on there tight, real tight. All right, we're gonna use this tool once again. It's a nice little cheat sheet on it. 30 pounds is 270, so you can do the math on that. It's roughly 10 times. I set up my torque wrench to 30 foot-pounds. The handle actually says 47. I've calibrated this properly by shoving it in a vise and using a scale instead, because I know I can't trust this tool. So I always do it myself. But anyway, if I tighten this to 30, we get 270, which is a little more than the rated, which I think is 254, if my memory serves me correctly. You can go tighter. You're not supposed to go a ton tighter unless you're a racer, but I've seen some racers tighten these things to 400 plus foot-pounds, and sometimes the gland nuts will implode. And I mean, quite literally, they, they break inwards, and then what's funny is even though you tighten it that tight and you wonder how the hell you're gonna get it out, you can just put your thumb on it and it just magically comes out. I don't know, amazing. Amazing. I haven't encountered that though because I don't build a whole lot of race engines myself, but Wild Bill himself can tell you about that. Alright. Just your simple 11 millimeter wrench is on here, and this is one of those times that it would be nice to have an extra hand for one thing. It would also be nice to have my flywheel stop on here so that way I can lock the thing and stop it from turning. Anyway. We'll see how tight we can get this thing here. We're looking for 30 foot-pounds. Might be able to get it right here. Actually, that was it. I don't believe it. It seems to think that we're tight. I don't think we're tight, though. Now, often you don't have to turn these things very far to get your... In fact, that was it. Yeah, that's it. Didn't go very far at all. And as I said, you can go a little tighter spec and you're not going to kill yourself on this one but to hang from a six foot breaker bar even if you're 250 pounds I don't care that's just not the right way to do it this is just such a more elegant solution look down in the video description there'll be links to to get one of these and recommend it highly I mean you saw how easy that was just using hand tools all right I'm using my good. run out gauge and this may not be the best tool to use but you know what it does work very good in this situation there are other things you can use but this is the one I use on my lathe and as long as it's holding this arm steady you notice I'm tapping it and the needle's not moving I mean if I whack it it's going to but obviously it's stable what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the flywheel in and out and we're looking for a measure between three and five one thousandths anything greater than that's too big anything smaller than that's too tight and you're gonna seize your engine when it starts to heat up I'm gonna try to get in nice and close so you guys can see this process there you go. Currently I have it dialed in at zero. What we're gonna do is we're gonna push this flywheel in all the way and then let go. And wherever it sets at, we're gonna dial that into zero. 
just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull on the flywheel and let go and see where it ends up at. And right now we are at exactly three one thousand, so we're on the tightest limit. Now you don't wanna measure while you're pulling on that flywheel, believe it or not. Flywheels will flex just a little bit, as well as all your bearings and everything else. It's gonna be a little bit of motion. But that's what you want. Between three and five one thousandths, the tighter the better. Because as it wears, it's gonna open up to five one thousandths. So that means technically I could have more miles to run this engine. Now I knew this engine was in good shape from the time that I got it. I had a great backstory on as to where it came from. And going through it, it looks like everything was good except for whoever greased up the uh, <laughs> input shaft. But I don't know who did that. Maybe it was that young girl that, that handled that, that installed the engine. But whoever built the engine, I trust it. All right, we got our in place set. Now we're ready to install that clutch. So let's pull this sucker right off of here. The earlier throw out bearings use this ring in the middle of these uh, uh, pressure plate diaphragm fingers, but the later style doesn't require them at all. And if you put this style pressure plate into a later style clutch, it's gonna explode your throw out bearing. Um, ask me how I know. <laughs> it's actually what happened to my 73 White Beetle because I wasn't paying attention. Anyways, the easy way to get these out is just gonna be simply to bend these little tangs up you only have to get a couple of them up, like two or three, pull this ring out, and then the whole thing will just simply fall out. There's really not much to this thing at all. Uh, I'm trying not to get this thing dirty, because my brake clean, the cap busted off. Don't you just hate when that happens? And I mean, it's a, it's an almost full can, it's brand new. So anyway, this is going back to the store, I'm not happy. Freaking cap breaks, stupid shit nowadays that people make. Anyways, yep, we're gonna this pry This one that worked out. a little differently than I thought. This one actually has a little ring that you can remove without having to bend any of those tangs out. This is nice because I can actually reinstall it and use it again because it's not destroyed. Now if I lift this up the ring should fall out and it did. This is very nicely designed. This is the first time I've seen one that looks quite like this. Some of the other designs I've had to use in the past I had to smash all the clips off of things just to get it to function but uh, yeah this can be used again and I will put this in a safe place in case I ever have to convert another clutch back to early style. Yeah, I'm going to show this one more time because I'm so impressed with this thing. I haven't seen one like this before. You can actually reinstall the circlip by hand. I mean, it was so easy to remove. It's going to be just as easy to reinstall it. Just simply work it around in a circle until it's completely pushed in. That's it. There it is. I'm going to put this in a special drawer, and if I ever need one of these, it's going to be really nice to have that because this thing, as you just saw, it's so easy to work with. I didn't have to damage it to get it apart. Fantastic. I'm a happy, happy boy today. <laughs> All right, it's clutch time, guys. Nipples facing out. Everybody always loves their nipples out. All right, that's it. Clutch is installed. That's correct. You don't bolt in the clutch. You just drop it in the flywheel. All right, let's go ahead and put our pressure plate in. Again, don't touch the mating surfaces. Mm-hmm. Never shake hands with a porn star because they've been touching their mating surfaces. Just get your bolts started. Once you get that first one in, usually they're not too hard to do after that. That one's being a dick. If they're gonna be a dick, you just come back to them later. <laughs> We gotta get these started because the next step is a critical one. You know, that one goes in easy. Just the one on top wants to be a jerk. That one went in easy. Oh, now get your ass out. Oh, now it goes in. Just wanted to be last, that's all. All right, the most critical step you gotta is get next. your clutch pilot tool. Fucking idiot, you stupid dog. What the hell's the matter with you, duck man? You're such a clumsy piece of shit, you moron. Hey, well, guess it's okay. <laughs> Get your clutch pilot tool, and this is kind of important because this is what's gonna line up your clutch before you tighten up your pressure plate. Because if your clutch is out of alignment, when you go to throw your engine in your car, your engine's not gonna go in, or it will, but it's gonna take a lot of crowbars and swearing and all kinds of just uh, action. A lot of action, a lot of force, a lot of things you don't want to have to do. And this will solve all that by simply pushing it in 
grabbing that clutch and then pushing into the pilot bearing. Now that clutch is centered inside that flywheel, and these bolts can be tightened down. Alright, noisy neighborhood time again. Sirens, dogs barking, noisy trucks coming down the street. What a day for noise. About to start getting dark, too. Alright, we're gonna start snugging these up. And we're gonna try to do them in some kind of a crisscross, kind of pattern. Kinda. You don't want to tighten any one of them too much at once because people say you can warp these things. I've never experienced a warp one, but I've always kind of done it the right way though. Just a little bit at a time. Okay, 18 foot-pounds is what they each have to be torqued to. Once you've got them seated as I have, it's not hard to do from here. Let me recalibrate my torque wrench, and we'll get these things snugged up. Yeah, here we go, 18 foot-pounds for the win. This one I've already started to tighten up before. Hit the record button. All right. Get over here. Eighteen. Just the way I like them. Eighteen and tight. <laughs> And I think this is the last one. I was crisscrossing. I don't know what I didn't slip up here, but I'm just going to double check. No, this was the last one. Wish I had that flywheel lock, but again, it is possible to do without it. Here's my bolt 18. Double check just to be sure. There it is. Somebody liked to tell me, hey, Duckman, you're turning your torque wrench too tight. What? <laughs> Whatever the torque wrench is dialed in at, is as tight as it's gonna let me go, unless I fail to observe the clicking. I can continue to turn the bolt way beyond that, but anyway, yeah, some people just, yeah, friggin' people. This old clutch disc has very, very low miles on it, I can tell because these rivet holes are real deep, and the grooves are real deep. These are the kinds of things that disappear as the clutch gets, you know, used. And other than it being covered in grease, I don't see anything wrong with it. There's no reason why I couldn't reuse this again in the future. So anyway, I'm gonna stick it in a pile of good to be reused stuff and it'll go on a shelf until we move to the new place and I build another car or something that needs something like this. So, very nice. Hold on to your pants. Hold on to your pants. <laughs> All right. Another day of accomplishment. Man, today we recorded B and I about six, five, six different videos that'll be coming up this week. So I got a lot of work, a lot of work done today. Plus then I set up the clutch and replaced the uh, flywheel on here, so I put on the nice lightened version. Some of you might be screaming, why would you put a lightened flywheel on a stock engine? Well, I mean, it's not really stock. It's got all the bolt-ons, dual carburetors, a nice uh, glass pack exhaust, uh, electronic ignition. I mean, all the bells and whistles that you can bolt onto this thing to make it run better, with exception of like a supercharger or a turbocharger or something else. Mm. I forgot I poured myself a beverage. Oh, I needed it, but I swear those people set that thing off just about every day. And sometimes it'll beep for five minutes before they shut it off. And the car they had previous, they did that too all the time, and the one that was previous to that, they did it too all the time. Anyway, I make my own noise over here. <laughs> I really don't have the right to complain, I suppose, but anyway, I digress. Why would you put a lightning flywheel on a stock engine? Well, it doesn't increase your power or your torque, but it feels like it does. It makes your engine rev up a whole lot faster, and the less weight you have to spin up means your car is essentially faster. I mean, you will feel the difference. And I did it on Ruby for no particular reason. I just, uh, 
You know, actually, I did have a reason for that. When I pulled the flywheel out of that thing, uh, it had a whole bunch of crud in it, and when I put it back together, I didn't clean it as well as I should have, and there was dirt kind of on one side of the flywheel, so I felt the thing shuddering. So I thought there was something wrong with the, uh, the flywheel that was on there, so I just replaced it with a lightened one. And as soon as I pulled it out, I saw what was wrong. There was too much dirt in it. Well, I threw the light one on it, and uh, even on a stock engine, the performance was just a huge difference. I mean, it's, it's big. It'll feel to you like a good 10% change, even though it's probably bullshit. <laughs> It doesn't increase your power at all, but again, it just makes it feel like it does. And that's why I put it on here. I mean, I'm just so happy with the way it, that it, the thing revs up, and I'm so happy with the, the grippiness of a Stage 1 clutch with a nice metallic disc to go on there. With a nice metallic clutch disc to go on there, it just makes a huge difference to me. Um, stock clutches, uh, let's just say I wanted to do a burnout. If I wanted to do a burnout, it's like the clutch would just slip. I mean, it might chirp the wheels a little bit, but it would just slip, just slip monster. And some people said, you know, we'll try a bus clutch on it. Well, I tried that. It was a little better, but it still just wasn't where it needed to be. I put a stage one on a metallic disc, and uh, it grips just a little bit better than the 350Z does when that thing's under power. And that thing, I can leave burnouts all over town, but of course, it's 300 horsepower. It's a pretty big difference versus the maybe 60 if I'm lucky. Probably closer to 50, but... <laughs> Yeah, on a, on a stock engine, I, I would recommend. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm tired. Little Cheeky over here is facing the wrong way. The camera's over here. Everybody wants to see you because everybody loves you. Oh, come on. Come on. Let me see. Get over here. You still haven't learned that you can have a sip of my drink yet. Oh, it scared her. <laughs> yeah, get in there. Yeah, have a sip. Come on, I'm going to corrupt you at two weeks old. Come on, Skeeter did it. We're all doing a little peer pressure. Come on. You didn't know you'd be the first chicken other than Biddy to have a drink. None of the other ones would do it, just Biddy. Biddy likes ice cream too. Biddy said into that real quickly. This one is afraid of ice cream. Did you get some? I think you got something, huh? Try again? Go ahead. Yeah, I think you got some. <laughs> Anyways, all the links down below are in the description for all the stuff that you saw in the video today, and there was a lot of different things. There was a lot of tools that make this job just so much easier. There's also links to all the individual parts that I replaced, including that O-ring. That's not something that you want to forget. Ask me how I know. Not that I ever forgot to put one in, but I have forgotten to replace them before on older engines, and those things would just piss out oil all over the place when they're running through that, um, right between the, the crank and the flywheel, actually. And I've also had some where I put a new O-ring and it still leaked, so I just slapped in a bunch of form gasket around the, uh, the O-ring, put the thing back together, and then it was fine. I don't know what it was about that one, it just kept leaking no matter how many O-rings I put in it, but uh, I couldn't find a barb on it, I couldn't find a sharp edge, I wasn't pinching it on assembly, it's just, it leaked. <laughs> anyway, it's fine now. What car was that? It might have been Ruby. It might have been Ruby. It's been a while now. I took all that stuff apart years ago. Three years ago, I you know this last, last couple of years have been a real blur, especially through 2020. So much has happened in my life, so much has changed. I went into a little bit of a creative funk. It was a little hard, a little difficult to get through some stuff. I lost so much, and I'm so happy for what I've gotten to keep and what I've gained, because even though I've lost so much, so many good things happened at the same time. It was just such a roller coaster ride. I just want an average life, you guys. And I don't want the highs and the lows and the highs and the lows. I just want a nice, steady, stable life. I don't need all that extra crap. Anyway, that's asking too much, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, it'd be nice to win a lotto, but at the same time, it's nice when everybody doesn't die, but it's, you know, it's extreme highs and extreme lows. No, I haven't won a lotto yet. Not even for a dollar. I feel a little gypped, actually, but anyway, I'd be in a shop if I won a lotto. I wouldn't even tell you I won a lotto. I would just start a new video in a shop and not say anything, because that's the kind of guy I am. Well, anyway, this guy is now signing off, and you're facing the wrong way again. You're giving everybody the ass. That's what birds do when they're not happy with somebody, that they show their asses to you. All right, get in there one more time. Go ahead. No? <laughs> Licky, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle bells. You get updates every time I video. Check out dogshit.net. You can see all my different links up there on the internet. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Getting in them footsteps, huh? <laughs> my neighbor, Brittany. I'm trying to get her up on YouTube. She says she wants to start a YouTube, but she's, she's like a little afraid of the camera. She's real pretty though, and really nice, and her husband's really cool. Her son is great too. The uh, the kid that ran into the side of the fastback on a scooter—that's their son. <laughs>
They're really cool people. They offered to fix the fastback and everything else and pay for it. I was like, no, just don't worry about it. I just hope he's not hurt. I mean, it's not a big deal. If it hit the Z or something, it might have been, you know, something I want to deal with. If it was Eleanor, yeah, I probably would have had a little hell to pay, but no, I'm cool about it. Really, I'm cool. Great people. And hopefully we'll get them on, you know, YouTube sometime soon. We'll put a wrench in your hands and uh, it'll be fun. Real good characters, real good personalities. Anyways, I'm talking too much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Ha, ha, ha.